Uh, you're calling from an 847 area code. Who are you? Where are you calling from? Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Nation of Obama. Nation of Islam Obama. Calling up uh, uh, fallen soldiers' families and comparing Al-Qaeda members to the 70s Knicks. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's, like... it's definitely a preview of tonight. Uh, is this Josh uh, from, Chicago? Josh from Chicago? Hey, Josh, what's on your mind, man? Uh, sorry, I don't have my Sam impression today. Uh, it's okay. The Obama Nation of Islam, Obama threw me. <laughs> it's all good, man. What's what's your thought? Uh, so two things. Um, first, so actually, I was just in England recently, mm-hmm. and um, how's that boy doing? Free he- I was uh, I was promoting a movie. Nice. I'm a big movie star. Okay. Um, but I was able to get NHS care because I had a I had a, a something uh, wrong with my ear. I was able to walk into a NHS health clinic even without an NHS card and get seen in like 20 minutes, which is actually quicker than a uh, city MD. Wow, it sounds terrible. Um, it sounds like exactly so, uh, the type of encroachment and freedom that we would never want here. Never. Yeah. Um. But I want to talk to you about the uh, executive orders that Trump just did with Obamacare. <clears throat> yeah. So basically, I mean, I know a lot of people are like really happy that this uh, repeal didn't go through. But I think what people need to understand is that Trump can still do what they wanted to do with the repeal and replace just by degrading Obama through these executive orders. Well, if yeah. he actually is able to do them. And uh, to be like wary and like keep calling their senators or, you know, and also keep putting pressure because they're going to degrade Obamacare even if they don't repeal it. Yeah, no doubt. We had Wendell, Partner, Wendell Potter on yesterday to talk about this. Adam Gaffney has a piece in the Jacobin which is slightly more optimistic about this. But, yeah, I mean, he's been threatening to do this since the beginning. Um Clearly, Bannon, I bet Bannon was agitating for this out of the gate. And, you know, I, I look, there are three points to position now. One is you're absolutely right. We need to keep in every way possible agitating to preserve the protections that were created out of the ACA. That's vital. And we need to bludgeon Republicans. And we need to bludgeon Trump with this and hopefully, you know, lead to a, a real strategy and 2018, which is obviously much more significant than speculating about presidential runs. And then the second thing, though, is, I mean, and this is not like a point to score. Actually, Josh, I'm going to let you go, okay, because there's a lot of noise in the background, but I'll keep going. Thanks, man. This is not about scoring some, you know, fucking Twitter point. But the reality is, is that the ACA, because it was so clever and because it was so third way and because it had all of this complexity to it, there's a lot of different, it's like a Jenga set. You know, there's so many different sort of pillars that you can undermine and knock out because it wasn't a full frontal assault on the basic reality of the problem with the American healthcare system, which is that it's privatized. And private health insurance company, you know, if Apple profited off of charging you for an iPhone that it didn't actually ever give you, you know, imagine that business model. It's fundamentally not going to work, and they restrained it, and they put real regulations in it, but they can, But it's always, as long as there's private insurance dominating the market, your ability to access quality and reliable coverage is already more expensive than it should be in any circumstances, and always under threat. So, and, and this is how these people think. They think structurally and strategically. And if any, there was ever a lesson to not just think on sort of carving out the margins of a playing field somebody else has created, it would be this. And, you know, the Medicaid expansion, again, is, I mean, as far as the health coverage, that's obviously the most successful part. And that's purely an expansion of a successful government program. Let's look at President Trump, Donald Trump. Uh, this is yesterday, I believe, or was this yesterday or this morning? This was yesterday. He was at a cabinet meeting, um, and in his usual coherent brain state, he's going to explain 
two interesting contradictory ideas about Obamacare. Let's check out Trump in action. In my opinion, what's happening is as we meet, Republicans are meeting with Democrats because of what I did with the CSRs, because I cut off the gravy train. If I didn't cut the CSRs, they wouldn't be meeting. They'd be having lunch and enjoying themselves, all right? They're right now having emergency meetings to get a short-term fix of health care, where premiums don't have to double and triple every year like they've been doing under Obamacare. Because Obamacare is finished. It's dead. It's gone. It's no longer — you shouldn't even mention it. It's gone. There is no such thing as Obamacare anymore. It is a — and I said this years ago. It's a concept that couldn't have worked. In its best days, it couldn't have worked. Well, it's still causing a lot of problems, though, apparently. So it doesn't exist, but the Congress still needs to work together to deal with the crisis that he just created with it. Um, he's a quarter right. The only way, or Obamacare was actually working to some fairly significant degree, and obviously the results are in, in terms of expanded coverage, expanded protections, lower medical bankruptcies, and other vital accomplishments of Obamacare. But the real way that Obamacare could have worked in terms of the kind of multi-structured system it put in place, multi-tiered system, would be with a public option there to drive those prices down. Now, were premiums going up because of Obamacare? No. Those companies wanted to raise premiums regardless. They were planning on doing it, and they blamed Obamacare for it. And one company, I believe it was Aetna, was basically pretty upfront about threatening to raise premiums if the Obama administration didn't let them go forward with a merger. So beware of that blame. But that's also classic Trump. I mean, he's even with this, and Lindsey Graham tried to adopt these talking points in his town hall uh, with Bernie and Klobuchar and Cassidy a couple weeks ago. There is this kind of fake pseudo-populism that Trump still pushes. He's framing an assault on working class people having access to health plans as a populist move against the insurance industry gravy train. So even in all of his stupidity and incoherence, he does know how to sell that talking point. Hi folks, Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.